Well, hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Baseball. Today, I'm going to show you guys a new game. It's new to me anyway. It's called Roster Card Baseball. Not exactly how sure long it's been out or how long it's been out, but um, it's very inexpensive. Five dollars will get you a whole season. It's a PDF, and what you get is you get this. You get this is the St. Louis Cardinals here. All the players, uh, position players, pitchers, all on one sheet. And I printed it off on a cardstock paper, so it's a little thicker, uh, a little more sturdy. You get your charts. You've got different, you know, scenario charts. You've got um, outs charts for the different possibilities. You have some rare play charts or double zero charts, and they're kind of different things that can happen. I've played some few games and I've never used those yet. Um, you get uh, advancement on hits chart for your different possibilities there. You have your hit and run chart and sacrifice bunt, uh, fielding the bunt, add advanced bunt chart, suicide squeeze. And there's a lot of options here. Everything you can do in a real game, you can do in this game. Stealing, you know, infield in. I'm not going to go over every single thing, but I'm going to show you the basics on how the game works. Then you can decide, you know, do I want to spend the $5? I think it's worth it for, you know, taking a chance on, you know, a game for 5 bucks. I don't think it's going to hurt anybody. So, how does this game work? Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to make out your lineups just like normal. Use a score sheet, whatever. Notebook paper. Make out your lineups. Get your pictures. You're ready to go. You don't have to write anything else down. You can write some stuff down. I'll get to a little bit later. If you want, it may make it move, run a little more smoothly. But, it's not necessary. And we'll get to that in a minute. But, so you're looking at this, and let's say Royce Clayton's leading off. EBH, extra base hit. So one to six is going to be an extra base hit. Then from seven to 14 will be a single. Okay, 15 to 19, you know, it's going to be a walk. If you roll a zero, he's hit by pitch. So a, a 20 through 28 is a strikeout. 29 to 56 is an out. 56 or 57. 57 to 59 is the lefty-righty splits. If they're the same handedness, it's an out. If they're opposite handed, it's a single. You get over here, this is the extra base hit area. So if you get a 1 to 6, you're going to roll again and you're going to see what kind of an extra base hit is it. 1 to 17 is a home run. 18 to 96 is a double. 97 to 100 is a triple. Okay, sacrifice hit. If you're trying to sacrifice, you're rolling a D6. You need to, first of all, roll one time to see if he gets the bunt down. One to five he does. Then you need to see, is it going to be a force out at second, or is it going to be a good sacrifice? You'll need to roll two times. Both times it'll be, need to be less than five. That's the basic sacrifice bunt. Hit and run. He's a B hit and run. You'll use the hit and run chart. Okay, the SBA is how many steals he attempted during the season. SBS is the success rate. So basically, you're going to roll these three dice, two D10s and a D6. And you'll read them. I have a D10 that has the 10s on it and then the singles. So a 64 and a 4. Let's say they're playing the Phillies. Now, as you noticed on here, 
59 on the batter is as high as it goes for the batter. So 59 is as high as it goes for the batter. Let's say Kurt Schilling is pitching. It's a 64. If you look at the pitchers, 60 through 69 is the hit column. 70 through 79 is a walk. 80 through 89 is a strikeout. Now their home run column, this is how it, this will affect the hitter's home run column. Kurt Schilling's pitching. So let's say you get an extra base hit. It'll be minus five from the home run column off the hitter. Okay, a wild pitch, 90 or 91. A roll of 90 or 91 is going to be a wild pitch check. Well, he's a one to six wild pitch, so it's going to be a wild pitch. Because D6 is what you roll, and a six is as high as you can get. So a 90 91 is going to be a wild pitch on Kurt Silling. But we got a 64. 64. 60 through 69 is a hit. Well, for Kurt Schilling, 60 through 64 is a hit. 65 through 69 is going to be an out. Okay, so so it is a hit. So you would look at the 4 and the 4. You go here. This is this is kind of the guide. You can even use it with bases empty. If there's nobody on, I think this is basically this chart right here is your guide, your base guide. So four, you're gonna look over here at the single digits on the D tens. Four, and then the reds of four. So it'll be a ground out to second. And as you notice here, zero through two is a pop out. Everything else corresponds to a position. Three is first base, second base, third base, short, left, center, right. Zero, one, two is a pop out. So it's ground out to ground ball to second, and then with nobody on base, it's a ground out to second. If somebody would have been on base, runner advanced first to second, it would have been a four, four. We would have come over here. And it's a double play unless it's a weak arm fielder. Uh, the second baseman has a weak arm. It's it's just a fielder's choice. The batter beats it out. So you have to look at the fielder's arm rating. And you'll find those. We'll get to that now. That's something you could write down when you make out your lineups. Over here is your, your fielding, your... Arm, fielding, and um, error ratings. A is for average. The comma means it's an average fielder. Two is your errors. So if it's an error check, it'll need to be a one or two for an error on a D6. A strong arm, average, range, one error, weak arm, poor range, the exclamation point. It actually means awful range if it's an exclamation point. So a five or a six, and that means he gives up a single if it's an error check or a range check on that fielder. Here it is, comma, average range is a comma. The uh, asterisk is great. So it saves all singles. Now, if you don't want to have to look that up because that can be a little time consuming sometimes when you're playing, say the Phillies are up, you roll a 96. It's can let's say you roll a 96 and then a one on the D6. So a one to four is an error check. A 96 and a one is an error check on the shortstop. So you're going to have to go back and look at the Cardinals. Who's playing shortstop? It's Royce Clayton. And here's his statistics here, or his attributes. He's strong-armed, star, range, and two-error. 
So if it was an error check and you rolled a one or a two, it would be an error on the shortstop. So it's really, it's pretty simple. There are a few quirky things. I mean, what I don't like is having to always look look the guy up. Who's up? Okay, it's it's the line. It's, I don't know, now we're looking at the Phillies, but let's say Scott Rowland's up. Okay, uh, where is he? Where's he at? Okay, there he is. And then you have to go across here to find the number. It takes a while. It doesn't seem like it would, but it does. Every time a guy comes up, because it's not in order, you know, it's not in your batting order order, obviously. So you always have to kind of look for the guy, then follow across, find the number, see what happens. Let's look at some of the pitcher things. Like we talked about the home runs, the pitchers can take away some home runs. Uh, some pitchers have an X, or X1, like right here. And Mike Grace, Darren Winston, Carlton Lower, Lauer. They have X1s in the strikeout. What that means is instead of a strikeout, it's going to be a ground out to the pitcher. All runners advance one base if it's in the strikeout column. So he's not really a very high strikeout guy. He's going to induce more ground balls. Let's look at stealing. So if you want to steal, first of all, you need to see if he gets a jump. Is the pitcher as strong-armed, average, or weak? This is for lefties. This is for righties. Okay, you'll roll, and if he's, let's say, strong-armed, a 1-4 to four lefty, it is a 4, so he does not get a jump. No jump if it's in this range. If it's outside the range, you'll look at his SBS number, and you'll roll the two D10s, and it's a seven. So Mike Lieberthal would get a stolen base. Now he only he don't only attempted, you know, three all year. This one on the other side is for the advanced, or for not for the advanced, but for the auto steal. So if you want to use the auto steal system which probably is the better way to go. I was calling my own. But if you want to call, if you want to do the auto steal, you will refer to this number after the slash. Let's say it was a, let's say, I don't know what it was, 20, or let's say 17, single for Lieberthal and a one. A one is the only thing that he can get that he would uh, have to steal on. So if, the, if this was, if you were using the auto steal, stolen base auto, and the one came up on his roll, he would have to steal. And he would need a 67 or less. Which is not, you know, not too bad. It's 67%, basically. There's a 50, so it's a good stolen base. So that's how auto steal works. Injury's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you have the pitchers batting down here. This is how they they hit. Let's say there's a runner on first. Doug Glanville's up. Doug Glanville. Let's say Doug Glanville's on first. And Greg Jeffries is up. And he gets a single. So it's a single. Let's say it's a... Well, let's say it's an 18. So it'd be a... It would be a 10, if I could find it. 
10 and an 8. Well, let's just say 15. So 15, and let's say it's a 5. Glanville's at first, fast runner. You would look at right here on this runner advance hitch chart on hits. And you'll look at this second number on the D10s, 5 for this column. So it's a hit to center field. 5, go across to number 5. Fast or average runner is going to advance to third on a single. So obviously he's going to go to second. So we're looking at, is he going to go to third? It's a hit to center field. Use runner rating. So it will tell you here, use the runner rating. The runner rating is either fast or average. If it's a six, if this would have been a six, all runners would advance to third. Here he has to be a fast with an exclamation point. Some guys have that. Uh, Doug Glanville does not. So he would only go to second. The hold risk... So if it's a one, you have to decide, am I going to take a chance and go to third, or am I just going to go to second? If I'm going to risk it, this is your safe chance is one to four, five to six, he's out. You have to roll a D6. If you're in the 57, 57 to 59, and remember it's the lefty-righty split. So if you're in fall in that category... In other words, if it's the opposite hand, it's a hit from 57 to 59. So a hit, you look here, runner on first. If it was a 57, then he would go one base. 58 or 59, the runner goes two bases. Okay, so that's that says right here. Use the bracket advances. But if it's not a 57, 59, if it, let's say it was a 17, 7, and a 5, or 4, let's say, 4, you're going to use the arm rating. These are arm ratings down here. Weak, average. As it says right here, you, to left field, use arm rating. Weak, so if the fielder has a weak arm, he will go to third. Average or strong, he does not. So that's how you read those. So that's what you're looking at with this game. I think, you know, for $5, it is a good game. Now you're going to have to print it out. Um, I think it ends up actually being like six something because um, it's based in Canada. The guy who makes the game is in Canada. So uh, there's a little exchange right there if you use PayPal. So it ends up being like $6 something. But it's not going to break the bank. And it's a pretty, pretty decent game. My problems with it, like we talked about earlier, I don't like trying to find the guy every time. Reading across. If I have a card in my hand, I'm looking right at it. I don't have to find anything. I don't have to look anything up. It's right there in my hand. A little quicker. And then when you get something in the 90s, then you've got to go back and look at the other team. you got to look at the other team's sheet because now we're looking at the defense. And so it's kind of a back and forth thing there. You know, if you have a way to set them up in front of you, stand them up, I think that would be probably the ideal thing if you could stand them both up in front of you. Or you can lay them out in front of you, but it's a little harder to read that way. You know, if you have some kind of book stand or something to hold them up, that would be ideal. But I think, you know, again, I've played like three games. I did end up getting a lot of walks, a lot of runs. One game I had was 14 to 11, Cardinals. I had thought about playing a 98 Cardinals replay, 
but I don't think I'm going to with this game. I just, I can't get into it enough. I need the cards. I need them in my hands. I need, that just makes things more efficient for me. I don't want to deter anybody from getting the game because, you know, some people like this style, this format. You know, it suits some people. For me, it's not, it doesn't suit me that well. I could play it. I can have fun with it. I can play it. But I'm not going to do like a re season replay. I might play a game here or there. And um, if you want me to play a game out on YouTube, I will. But I'm not going to unless I get enough requests to do so. And I might... So uh, that's, that's where I'm at with this game. I think for six bucks, it's worth a shot. If you think you may enjoy this type of format, go ahead and give it a shot. I mean, they may have every season. Yeah, the roster card, there's three games. There's roster card, there's play ball, and there's fall classic. And it's at BaseballDiceGames.com. I believe. Google it up, Baseball Dice Games. There'll be three games there. This is roster card. And I think they actually have every season. I got the 98. So each season's five bucks. You can buy them by the, the decade if you want. I think the decade is 20 bucks. Or you can buy like every single season for a hundred bucks, I think. If you really like it. I would buy one season for five dollars, see if you like it, go from there. Because I like I said, you're gonna have to print it off. So there's some money there. But that's roster card baseball, not a real difficult game to figure out. There are some quirky things, like I I didn't show you every single thing, but you get the gist of it, or the gist of it, however you want to put it. That's how it goes. And I will, I got all the, I, I printed off all the National League teams, because like I said, I was going to do the uh, the Cardinals replay. By the way, after three games, McGuire had three home runs after three games. Now they claim... They claim that this game is spot on, on home runs. McGuire's on pace to 162, so I i don't know. <laughs> I'm just, that's just, that could happen. You know, you can go three games and hit three home runs. But just so happened it was the first three games. He had two and one and one and another and then none in the first one. So it wasn't actually every game. But that's all for now. That's Roster Card Baseball. Give it a check. Give it a look. $5. Till next time, you guys. Take care and God bless.